Lesson 9-7, and before we go to 9-7 formally, let, uh, let us go to uh, multiplying polynomials by using algebra tiles. Okay, We'll use models to uh, multiply polynomials. So you can find product of uh, binomials by using algebra tiles, and we talked about algebra tiles uh, in the past uh, few lessons. And let's see how we do this using algebra tiles when we want to multiply x, uh, the quantity x plus 2 and the quantity x plus 3. Remember in the last lesson we multiplied polynomials with monomials and this time we're going to multiply polynomials with the polynomials. Okay, so again in algebra tiles the objective is to create a rectangle so that the rectangle will be the area of uh, your, uh, the area uh, of uh, the uh, the product of the polynomials. For example, if you have x times x plus 2 times x plus 3, x plus 2 will be your width and x plus 3 will be your length and the product will be the area of the rectangle. Okay, so the rectangle will have a width of x plus 2, the length of x plus 3, and uh, we'll use algebra tiles to mark off the dimensions on a product map. And just as a recall, okay, a little bit of recall, uh, when you talk about algebra tiles, the reason why this is x squared because the dimensions of this square is x and x and the dimensions of this x tile will be the length is x and the width is 1 and the dimensions of this unit tile will be 1 and 1. So when you have x plus 2 and x plus 3 okay, uh, on the top and uh, x plus 2 uh, on the side, okay, on the a vertical column, horizontal column would be x plus 3, a vertical column would be x plus 2. So if that's the case, if you multiply x times x, you'll end up with, okay, an x squared tile. So you put it there. Multiply x times 1, you'll end up with an x tile. Okay, x, tile, x, uh, x uh, times 1 will be an x tile again. And put that in there. Okay, and x times 1 is also an x tile right there. Okay, there you go. So again, we multiply x times 1, it'll be an x tile, but this time, okay, we'll make it lie down. Okay, right there. Okay, x times 1 again is another x tile. So, Lie it down again. Okay, and now you have 1 times 1 will give you a unit tile. 1 times 1 is 1. Okay, 1 times 1 is 1. Okay, 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. And 1 times 1 is 1 right there. 1 times 1. Okay, so if you notice, it forms a rectangle. If we, if I do it properly, this is how it's going to look like. Okay, this is your rectangle where this is your uh, width and this is your length. And the area would be the product of my, uh, of my binomials. Okay, and if you notice, there's 1x squared and 5x tiles and 6 unit tiles. So that means uh, you'll end up with x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay? And that's how you multiply binomials when you're using algebra tiles. Let's take a look at this one, activity number 2. This time we are, we are going to multiply x minus 1 times x minus 3. Okay, again the rectangle will have a width of x minus 1 and the length of x minus 3. Use your algebra tiles to mark off dimensions on the product map, then begin to make rectangle. Uh, a re then begin to make the rectangle with algebra tiles. So step number one. Okay, that's what we do. X. This is our product map right here, and then x times x will give us x squared. Okay, x times negative one will give us a negative x tiles. X times negative one again a negative x tile. Okay, x times negative 1, another x tile. There. x times negative 1, another x tile. But this time, we're going to, oops, sorry, not that one. We're going to lie it down. 
There you go. You get that one right there. Okay. And x times uh, and uh, from there, multiply negative 1 times negative 1 will be a positive 1. So you'll have a unit tile there, a unit tile there, and another unit tile there. Okay? So basically, we first start with the x squared and the 3, okay, negative x tiles. And then after that, we do the rest. The yellow part is step number 2. Determine whether to use three yellow uh, one tiles or three one uh, uh, negative or red one tiles. Since you're multiplying a negative times a negative, it becomes a positive. Okay, and that's the reason why you end up with the three yellow tiles. Now, if you look at uh, our product mat right here, you have one x uh, x squared tile, and you have four uh, red tiles. That means negative four x plus three. So the product, okay, of this rectangle, okay, uh, the product of x minus 1 times x minus 3 will be x squared minus 4x plus 3, okay? Let's take a look at activity number 3, and let's take this one step further using algebra tiles. So let's use algebra tiles to find x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. Again, we start off with a product mat right there. And we uh, mark off our uh, mark off our uh, length and our width. Our length is two uh, x minus one. An x plus x plus x minus one is two x minus one. And x plus one on the vertical side, x plus one right here. And then we start our multiplication and we fill in our product mat until we get a rectangle. So x times x will give us x squared. Okay, x times x again will give us another x squared. Okay, and you have negative 1 times x will give us a negative x tile right there. x times 1 will give us uh, a positive, okay, positive x tile. Let me get that from here. Where is that thing? Right there. Okay, down here. Okay. Okay, put it here, clone it. Okay, so that's uh, negative x tile. It's a positive x tile right here, but we will lie it down right there. Okay, and then x times 1 again will be okay, another positive x tile right there. Okay, oops. Okay, so you have negative 1 times negative 1 will give you a negative unit tile right there okay so that is our rectangle okay you have a rectangle now and if you notice okay uh, we just filled it in right there we filled it in exactly then we go to step number two but this is uh, supposed to be uh, our rectangle so step number two is just basically why is that there? I don't know why that thing is there. Take this thing out and take that thing out. There you go. Let me take that thing out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's delete that thing. Mm, start. What the heck is this? Okay, that's gone. Okay, so determine what color x tile and what color 1 tile to use to complete the rectangle. We just uh, completed the rectangle. The area of our x tile is a product of x and 1. This is represented by the green x tile, that's what we did there. The area of uh, 1 tile is represented by the product of negative 1 times 1. That's the reason why it's a red tile. This is represented by a red tile. Okay, I just said that. So now you have this. Okay, you have your rectangle, like what we did. You have two x squared tiles, two green tiles, and one red tile, and one uh, unit tile. Okay, next thing we need to do is we need to add like terms and we need to get rid of our zero pairs. Rearrange the tiles to simplify the polynomial you have formed. Notice that the zero pair is formed by the x tiles. So basically what happens is that there are two uh, blue x tiles, one green x tile and one red x tile. Blue, 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 green. Two blue x tiles, one green x tile. Why is that one green? Because there's a zero pair. The two green and one red 
one green and one red form a zero pair so you're left with one green next tile and one red uh, unit tile or one tile so in the simplest form if you look at this this becomes 2x squared plus x minus 1 2x squared plus x minus 1 okay and you can uh, try your uh, uh, try your, your luck on algebra tiles by looking at some of these examples okay now let's go to the lesson proper 9-7 okay well let's not let me look at let's look at some examples and use the algebra math that I just made for you okay let's do uh, uh, let's pick one example right here x minus 3 times 2 x minus 1 let's do that no 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 let's do number 5 x minus 1 times 2 x plus 2 so x minus 1 uh, times 2 x plus 2 and go get that and let's put that on our next page so it will be easier for us so if we're using that example right there paste that there okay so you have x minus 1 and 2x minus 2 so you basically have okay then x minus 1 right here and 2x minus 2 which is 2x's and 2 unit tiles okay so if I multiply x times x I end up with x squared I multiply x times x again I end up with x squared okay I multiply 1 times negative 1 I end up with a negative x tile go get that bring that up a little bit there you go okay an x times negative 1 will give me a negative x tile again. Okay. And if I get, uh, and if I multiply 1 times x, that will give me a positive x. Right there. x times 1 will also give me a positive x. Right there. Let me get these numbers and make them closer right there. Okay. Negative 1 times 1 will give me a negative 1. So that's a negative unit tile negative 1 times 1 will give me again a negative okay okay so this is our rectangle x minus 1 times 2 x plus 2 and let's uh, break it down and let's try to simplify this so you have two x tiles right here but look at our green tile this forms a zero pair these two form a zero pair so those go away okay so those go away because there is a zero pair and we are simply left with, with uh, these x squared and uh, the two unit negative uh, unit tiles. So you end up with 2x squared right here and that one which is minus 2. So when you're multiplying x minus 1 times x 2x plus 2 is the same as 2x squared minus 2. Now let's look at that, that one down there. See if the answer is correct or not and I think it is oopsie did not show probably it's on the side x squared plus 3x plus 2 oh and that's not the one that we solved this is the one that we solved bottom there you go 2x squared minus 2 and that's how you use uh, algebra tiles to be able to uh, multiply binomials Again, algebra tiles are useful for visual purposes, so you can see exactly why you're multiplying binomials, you are forming a rectangle. But for binomials, uh, but it is not, it's it is impractical to use when you're using bigger numbers. And let's go to our lesson proper 9-7, multiplying polynomials. And in this lesson, you will use the FOIL method to multiply two binomials and to multiply any two polynomials by using the distributive property. Uh, there's another method that I'm going to teach you which is not going to be in the book so uh, uh, pay attention so why is this important because you can you can use polynomials to solve problems involving art and business and let's take a look at this uh, art connection have you ever flown over farmland and looked down 
you probably saw various fields that gave the appearance of a patchwork a patchwork quilt however if you had flown over a field designed by Stan Hurd you may have seen some sunflowers in a vase in a vase or a picture of Will Rogers okay so since 1981 Stan Hurd has been combining the his interests in art and agriculture to form crop art. Most of Hurd's work is harvested and therefore is only visible for a short period of time. So in 1991, however, Hurd created a picture above using native perennials. This is this picture is called Little Girl in the Wind. It depicts a Kickapoo Indian girl by the name of Carol Cadu. And if you fly near Salina, Kansas, you may see this work of art. So this is a work of art that uh, uh, you can only see way, okay, way above when you're flying above the field. Okay, so in 1991, he did that. And suppose the measure of the length of the field used for Little Girl in the Wind can be represented by the polynomial 7x plus 2 units. And the width can be represented by 5x plus 1 units. You know the area of the rectangle is the product of the length and the width. You can multiply 7x plus 2 and 5x plus 1 to find the area okay, of the rectangle. So if you get 7x plus 2 times 5x plus 1, okay, that is, this is equal to 7 times uh, 7x times 5x plus 1 plus 2 times the quantity 5x plus 1 using the distributive property. Okay? So using the distributive property, and we start multiplying, okay? So I'm multiplying 7x times 5x, and 7x times 1, 2 times 5x, and 2 times 1. And we will get what we, I just said, 7x times 5x, 7x times 1, plus 2 times 5x, plus 2 times 1. Simplify simplify that expression, you end up 35x squared plus 7x plus 10x plus 1, and you have two like terms, 7x plus 10x, you add those two like terms, you end up with 35x squared plus 17x plus 2. Okay, so that is the product of 7x plus 2 times 5x plus 1. Another way you can do this is by using our model. So an area can also be determined by finding the sum of the four smaller rectangles. So if you have 7x plus 2, remember our, our product map, we put the uh, uh, one expression or one polynomial on the vertical column and one uh, polynomial on the horizontal column. This is very this is similar but not exactly the same as the product map. So you have 7x plus 2 here and 5x plus 1. And if you multiply 7x plus 5x, you end up with okay 7x times 5x and this becomes 7x times 1, okay, 2 times 5x, and 2 times 1. So if you follow that model, okay, you end up with 35x plus 7x plus 10x plus 2, the same thing, 35x plus 17x plus 2. So the distributive property in the model, okay, basically helps you determine the product of those two polynomials, okay? This example that we made here is actually okay, uh, a shortcut to the distributive property and we call this the FOIL method. So this example illustrates a shortcut of the distributive property called the FOIL method. You can use the FOIL method to multiply two binomials. So what is the FOIL method? The FOIL method simply means first, outer, inner, last. Okay. So F stands for first, O stands for outer, I stands for inner, L stands for last. So when you say first, me I, I mean first terms. Okay, so if I use the FOIL method, okay, the first terms that I'm going to multiply will be 7x and 5x. That's my first. Okay, my outer terms will be 7x times one that's outer term my inner terms would be two times five x and my last term would be two times one so 
and that's our FOIL method. So following the FOIL method, okay, first term would be 7x times 5x, that's our f. Okay, our outer term would be 7x times 1 plus 7x times 1 plus her inner term which is 2x plus 1, sorry, 2 times 5x. And our last term would be 2 times 1. Okay, following that method, you know, our first term would be 35x, our outer term would be 7x, inner term would be 2x, last term would be uh, 2. If you notice in the FOIL method, you combine your outer and your inner term because they are like terms. You still end up with 35x plus 17x plus 2. So the FOIL method for multiplying two, bin two binomials, okay, again, stands for first, outer, inner, and last terms. Okay? And uh, one thing to take note of, the FOIL method only works with binomials two binomials. It does not work with a trinomial or a monomial times a polynomial. So the, the FOIL method only works with binomials, okay, two of them. So let's uh, use the FOIL method to find the each product, x minus 4 times x plus 9. So again, x minus 4 times x plus 9. So again, we use our FOIL method for this one. FOIL method, first term, you multiply the two first terms. That's our f. Okay. Uh, our outer terms would be x times 9. Okay. Our inner terms would be negative 4 times x. And our last terms would be 4 times 9. So if you follow that FOIL method, that becomes x times x, our, our first term, okay? Plus our outer term, which is 9 times x, or x times 9, our, uh, plus our inner term, which is negative 4 times x, plus our last term, which is negative 4 times 9. So we end up with x squared plus 9x minus 4x minus 36, or simply x squared plus 5x minus 36 and if you notice you you always add your outer and inner term because those are your like terms you are combining those like terms now why is the foil method so important because the foil method as you get used to the foil method you can do this actually mentally and as you do this mentally okay uh, you will save a lot of time when you're multiplying two binomials Okay, another way to go about this, okay, which is not in the book, I told you, another method that I will show you is what we call the, <coughs> is what we call the Punnett square method. Okay, so the Punnett square method, we're going to make a square. That's why it's called the Punnett square. There. Okay. And do you learn this last year in genetics? So this is our Punnett square, and then we okay write down our polynomial, one on the vertical column, one on the horizontal column, just like the one the one we did in the previous page. So this becomes x minus four. Include the operation before the number, and this is x plus nine. Okay, so using that, multiply x times x, that'll give you x squared. Multiply x times 9, that'll give you 9x. Multiply 4 times negative 4, that'll give you negative 4x. And multiply negative 9 times, uh, 9 times negative 4 is negative 36. And in the Punnett square method, you always add your diagonals. Those are your like terms. So if you do that, okay, end up with x squared, now 1, 9x minus 4x will give you positive 5x minus 36, okay? So you still end up with x squared plus 5x minus 36. And the Punnett square method will also work when you're multiplying a polynomial by another polynomial, okay? Let's take a look at example B. 
you have 4x, uh, quantity 4x plus 7 times the quantity 3x minus 8. Let's use the FOIL method first. Okay, use the, using the FOIL method, you have 4x plus 7, 3x minus 8. I just copied the problem. Then going back, okay, first term would be 4x. Okay, sorry, that's, uh, that's not correct, my bad. Our first term would be 4x and 3x. That's our f. Our outer terms would be 4x and 8. Our inner term would be 7 times 3x. And our last term would be 7 times negative 8. And if we follow that, okay, first term, 4x times 3x plus 4x times negative 8, our outer term, inner term 7 times 3x, last term would be 7 times negative 8, okay? Simplify, you have 12x squared minus 32x plus 21x minus 56. Combine your like terms, you end up with 12x squared minus 11x minus 56. Now using the Punnett square method, okay, so how we do this, Okay, using the Punnett square method, it's greater Punnett square, again a binomial. There you go. And since there are two terms for for a binomial or in a binomial, you use a four by four grid, or you put four by seven here. Okay, 4x plus 7 and 3x minus 8. Okay, then multiply 3x times 4x, that will give you 12x squared. 3x times 7 will give you 21x. Negative 8 times 4 will give you negative 32x. And negative 8 times 7 will give you 50 six again we add our diagonal so you end up with 12x squared 32x minus 21x will give you negative 11x and simply bring down fifth oh, sorry negative 56 because negative 8 times 7 is negative 56 let me erase that okay I can always stick 11x minus 56. So you have the FOIL method and you have the Punnett square method. Okay, so this is the Punnett square method from what we learned last year. Okay, so that is example number one. The FOIL method becomes very useful again when you are trying to multiply two binomials mentally. It will save you a lot of time. So let's do example number two. In example number two, you have a binomial multiplying it by a trinomial. Okay? So when you're doing that, uh, you cannot use the FOIL method here. So you need to use the distributive property method. And we'll use the Punnett square method on the left later on. So copy the problem. And then use the distributive property method two times. 3y minus 8y plus 7 plus 5 times 3y squared minus 8y plus 7. So the first things first is what we did in the first. Uh, first thing we did, so we multiplied 2y by the whole thing and multiplied 5 by the whole thing. So you end up with that. Then continue with the distributive property method. That means you are multiplying. Why is it always thick? 2y by 3y squared, 2y times negative 8y, 2y times 7, 5 times 3y squared, 5 times negative 8y, 5 times 7. So you end up with that one. Okay, let me erase that so you can see. 6y cubed minus 16y squared plus 14y. And then the distributive property will give you 15y squared minus 40y plus 35. 
then since you're just adding you can take out the par the, the the parentheses for both and simply start adding like terms okay so take out the parentheses okay and start adding like terms so your like terms would be 16y squared and 15y squared will give you negative y squared okay 14y and negative 40y will give you negative 26y and simply bring down 35. So after you combine like terms, that would be the product of your two polynomials. Again, if we use the Punnett square method, this is how it's going to look like. Okay. Since this is uh, two terms by three terms, I am going to make... Okay. I'm going to make a 3 by 2 Punnett square. Okay, so 3 by 2 Punnett square, that's a 3 by 2 Punnett square. Okay, so arrange them. Okay, on the vertical side, I'm going to write 2y plus 5. On the horizontal side, I'm going to put 3y squared minus 8y plus 7 okay since starter multiplication 3y squared times 2y will give me 6y cubed okay 2y times negative 8y will give me negative 16y squared 2y plus 7 will give me 14y 3y squared times 5 will give me 15y squared Negative 8y times 5 will give me negative 40y. And 5 times 7 will give me positive 35 or simply 35. Then again, we add our diagonals because our diagonals will produce our like terms. And that's how we combine our like terms. Okay. And then from there, okay, we get 6y cubed which is that one and we combine our like terms this is negative 16y squared plus 15y squared is negative y squared negative 40y squared plus 14y squared is negative 26y and you simply bring down 35 so the same product but a different method of getting to it so this is the Punnett square method of uh, finding the product of those two polynomials in letter b you have a trinomial being multiplied by a trinomial so again, we start off by copying the problem, and then we use the distributive property method again, distributing x squared to the entire term, uh, entire expression 3x squared minus 7x plus 2, and 4x times 3x squared minus 7x plus 2, and negative 5 times 3x squared minus 7x plus 2. Uh, using the distributive property, okay, even further, you distribute x squared times 3x squared, it will give you 3x to the fourth, x squared minus 7x will give you 7x cubed, x squared plus times 2 will give you a uh, positive 2x squared. Distribute 4x squared, end up with 12x cubed. Distribute 4x squared to negative 7x will give us negative 28x squared. Distribute 4x to 2 will give us positive 8x. And same thing with this one, negative 5 times uh, negative 5 times 3x squared will give us uh, negative 15x squared, but they haven't distributed it yet. So let's just do this. 5 times 3x squared is 15x squared. 5 times 7x is negative 7x is negative 35x. And 5 times 2 is 10. Okay, but you're still subtracting. Okay, so to be able to simplify that, we need to get rid of our parentheses. And to get rid of our parentheses, we need to distribute the negative 1 here. To negative 215x squared, negative 35x, and 10. So you end up with this expression. Simply take out the parentheses for this expression. Take out the parentheses for this expression because you are simply adding. So you can take it out without any consequence. But when you're subtracting, you need to distribute the negative 1. And that's the reason why you have negative 15x squared plus 35x minus 10. Okay? Now add up all your like terms together, you end up with 3x to the 4th plus 5x cubed minus 41x squared plus 43x minus 10. 
and that is the product of that particular uh, those two polynomials and you, again you can use the okay Punnett square method to do that and let's do this one more time okay let's uh, make our Punnett square since you have a trinomial being multiplied with a trinomial we'll do a 3 by 3 Punnett square okay we'll do a 3 by 3 Punnett square there you go so that's our 3 by 3 Punnett square and let's start multiplying I put here x squared plus 4x minus 5 and this is 3x squared minus 7x plus 2 okay so if you notice it's still in descending order okay and we simply multiply this becomes 3x to the fourth this becomes negative 7x cubed this becomes 7x squared. The product of this one will be 12x cubed. The product of this one would be negative 28 okay, x squared. And this one would be positive 8x. This one will be negative 15x squared. This one will be negative or positive 35x. And this is simply negative. 10. Again, add the diagonals. These are your diagonals. Right here. And your diagonals are your like terms. So doing that, you now have 3x to the 4th and 7x squared minus 20, 28x squared minus 15x squared will give you negative 41 x squared and 35x plus 8x squared will give you 43x and simply bring down negative 10. So if you notice both methods will work the Punnett square method and the distributive property method. Okay now polynomials can also be multiplied using column form be careful to align the like terms so there's one more method uh, you can use column form or the vertical method for this one and this is how it works so you have you want to find x cubed minus 8x squared plus 9 multiplied by 3x times 4 first copy the problem down okay and if you notice okay uh, you used 0x in x cubed minus 8x plus 0x plus 9 you, you, you just use it as a placeholder because the uh, uh, the x with the exponent 1 is not in that expression so use 0x as a placeholder okay and then uh, that's the reason why it says be careful to align the like terms and since 3x does not align with any like term in 8x squared you use 0x as a placeholder so 3 2 1 again in descending order and then you multiply okay 4 times 9 is 36, 4 times uh, 0 is 0, 4 times uh, negative 8 is 32, and 4 times 1 is 4, so it's 4x cubed, okay, minus 32x squared plus 0x plus 36. That's the product of 4 and all of those terms, okay? And then we use now 3x and multiply that with all of those terms, end up with 27x, okay, 0x squared, okay? 8x or uh, negative 24x cubed and 3x to the fourth okay and simply add them okay if you add them 36 27x uh, negative 32x negative 20x cubed okay and 3x to the fourth that is the sum okay of uh, that is the sum of these two uh, polynomials and that this is the product of the trinomial and the binomial okay and the placeholder also works when you're doing it using the uh, Punnett square method again let's do that again okay so using the Punnett square method 
uh, you, need, you, you now have, since you have 3, 2, you're missing 1, you need to put 4 terms in 2 terms. So 4 terms in 2 terms. Okay, let's make this small, make this long, because we are using 4 terms now. Okay. And then we divide this into four. One, two, three, and four. And this one into two. Okay? So let's write our polynomials. This is 3x plus 4. And this is x cubed minus 8x squared plus 0x plus 4. Again, when you're multiplying uh, using the Punnett square method, you need to also have that placeholder 0x or else uh, this will not work. Okay? And you now multiply. This becomes 3x to the fourth minus 24x cubed uh, plus... 0x squared plus 12x. Okay, and this is 4x cubed minus 32x squared uh, plus 0x squared. No, 0x only, sorry. Take down that, take down. Okay, 0x only. Okay, and this is 4 times 4 is 16. The reason why you need to put that placeholder is because once you start circling the diagonals, if you don't have that placeholder, your like terms will not line up and you won't be able to add them. Okay, so you have 3x to the fourth now. Okay, minus 20x cubed minus 32x squared. Okay. Uh, plus 27x plus why is that 12x plus 36 the fourth oh because that is 9 okay so if that is 9, because I copied it wrong, it's supposed to be 9, it's supposed to be 4, so this is 36. And this is supposed to be 27. There you go. So plus 27x plus 36. Okay? So that works. So the Punnett square method, the, col uh, the vertical, uh, the, the using column form and the distributive property method. Okay? Let's take a look at the last example. Last example now talks about the volume V of a prism equals the area of the base times the height. Okay, so with this figure, write the polynomial expression that represents the volume of a prism shown at the right and find the volume if the area is equal to, uh, if A is equal to 5, not the area. Okay, so let's again, we talk about formula for volume. Volume is always base times height, where big B represents the area of the base talked about that last year okay and let's do that area of the base which is big B would be okay uh, this diagram is the, uh, is the is the base and to be able to find this area the area is the shaded region we need to find the entire area or we need to complete this rectangle Okay, and then subtract this white area right there. Okay, so to be able to find that area, we need to find the area of the entire rectangle and subtract that to get the area of our base. Okay, makes sense. Okay, so do that. Okay, find the area of the rectangle that is 3a by 4a, then subtract the area of the rectangle that's 6 by 5. So we want to get the full area, subtract this small area, to be able to find the area of the shaded region. 
So that's going to be 3a times 4a, which is the area of the big rectangle, and this is the area of the small rectangle. So the, our base will be 12a squared minus 30. Okay, since the formula for volume is base times height, we simply get that. Okay, and find, multiply it with the height, which is 5a plus 1 right there. Okay. And we can use the FOIL method to use to solve this. Okay. And using the FOIL method, 12a squared plus 5a, that is your first term. Okay, let's redo the FOIL method for you. Just in case you forgot. That's our f. Okay, multiplied by 12a squared plus 1, that is our o. Okay, 12a squared plus 1. Our inner term would be negative 30 times 5a, and our last term would be 30 times 1. Okay, so that's exactly what happened. And then we'll simplify that, end up 6, uh, 60a cubed plus 12a squared minus 150a minus 30. Combine like terms, you end up with... Well, you don't, you, uh, you don't have any more like terms, so you end up with the same thing. 60a cubed plus 12a squared minus 150a minus 30 cubic units. Remember, volume is always, uh, it will always have the unit of cubic units. Okay? Again, you can use this multiplication and use the Punnett square method, but we're not going to do that. Letter B, we simply substitute the value of 5 for A, and we end up with, okay, 7,020, okay? So 7,020 cubic units. So the volume of the prism is 7,020 cubic units. And uh, the secret word for this lesson is O'Brien. The secret word for this lesson is O'Brien. Okay? Thank you for watching.